Welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to be carrying on actually from what we left off in one of the previous videos related to the interview questions during an HVAC interview process. If you're an HVAC professional and you're going to be sitting down for an HVAC job interview, this video we're going to be giving you solid questions with answers that you should be familiar with as part of the preparation for the interview process. Now, at this current point in time, make sure that you click like and subscribe to our channel and make sure that you stay tuned for our latest updates. Now, let's get to the point. In, one, in the previous video, I'm going to share the uh, link for the video um, where we talked about the preparation for the interview process. If you're an HVAC professional, you're going to be applying for a specific job and you're looking forward for the interview process. Then we talked about the generic kind of questions and the groundworks which is common between all of the various types of positions that you could be getting with an HVAC profession. Now in this current video I'm going to just simply ask you and try to uh, highlight uh, let's say five key important questions that you should be familiar with, five key important aspects of the preparation for the HVAC interview that you should keep in mind and these questions I'm going to be sharing with them with you. I'm going to give you a bit of time to think about the question and try to answer it yourself. Now now, let's start off with question number one. What does HVAC stand for? HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Question number two. What are the components for any refrigeration cycle? Every refrigeration cycle, irrespective of the system that you are dealing with, is comprised of four main components. You have the evaporator, the condenser, the compressor, and the expansion valve or the throttling valve. These are the four basic components for any HVAC system. Question number three. What is the role of the evaporator within the refrigeration cycle? or any HVAC system. The evaporator, what does it do? It simply absorbs the heat or the load requirements from your space and transfers the heat from within a space into the coolant or the refrigerant, which is going to be utilized to take it from the space and throw it outwards into the environment. Excellent. Now, the second question would be, if that's the role of the evaporator, what is the role of the condenser? Now, the condenser is going to be taking the heat that has been absorbed by the refrigerant, which is cycling within your closed refrigeration cycle, take the heat and dump it into the environment or into the surroundings. This is the role of the condenser. Now, we're left off with two components. What is the role of the compressor? Now, after the evaporator has absorbed the heat, the state of the refrigerant tends to change from liquid as it goes into the evaporator. It absorbs the heat from the space that you have, and this will change the state of the refrigerant into gaseous state. Now, the compressor was going to be doing is at the inlet of the compressor is going to be taking this gaseous state, compressing it further, is going to be superheating it, is going to be adding extra pressure, and that will increase the temperature of the gas that has entered the compressor and it's ready now to enter the condenser in order to be able to dump the heat and create that temperature difference after the compressor in order to be able to transfer it through the condenser into the environment. Now, the compressor simply applies pressure in order to compress your evaporated refrigerant and increase its temperature and pressure. How about the throttling valve? Now, the throttling valve, once the condenser has released the heat into the surroundings, what's going to be happening is your refrigerant will be cooling down and you want to bring it back into the liquid state. And this is what's going to be happening. At the inlet of the expansion valve, you'll be throttling the cooled, let's say, refrigerant and dropping down its uh, temperature. What's going to be happening is it will be, uh, let's say, cooling off then transferred back into the liquid state and is going to be cycling again back into the evaporator and the cycle goes on and on. So if you notice, we have explained these four basic components for the refrigeration cycle with details. 
Now, the final question that we're going to be um, highlighting or that you should be keeping in mind is, what are the two main types of HVAC systems or the two main categories under which any HVAC system falls under? We have two main criteria. We have the centralized HVAC system and the decentralized HVAC system. Now, if you want to take a look at the different types of centralized and decentralized HVAC systems, take a look at our videos. We do have, um, just take a look at the, the video description below. I'm going to be sharing with you a couple links on the videos that are quite helpful for, for your preparation. Take a look at them in order to be familiar with details for the various types of centralized and decentralized HVAC systems. So we have covered multiple important questions which serve as the foundation for the preparation for your upcoming HVAC interview uh, process. So at this point in time, make sure that you join our growing community and feel free to share and write down your comments and your questions and we are more than happy to answer them and always respond to our community to clarify all of these obstacles that you might be facing. I truly hope that you found this video beneficial and I'll be seeing you in the upcoming video.